Tesla coils are high voltage transformers known around the world for their brilliant lightning like displays. Originally, they were intended in the 1890s as a method for transmitting energy without wires, but they actually required a high voltage power source in the first place just to operate. Invented only recently is the arc lighter. It uses a super compact circuit that generates thousands of volts to burn things. And luckily, they're easily hacked. And I'm excited to show you pretty much the ultimate arc lighter hack, turning one of these into one of these. It's handheld, it's rechargeable, it's a 50,000 volt arc lighter powered Tesla coil. One of the beauties of Tesla coils is that they can be built to pretty much any size you want. The Genesis coil behind me, that qualifies as kind of like a medium sized coil, but ever since I built that thing, I always wanted to build a super small, compact, handheld Tesla coil. You know, the original spark gap version. But that required a really compact power source that I couldn't find. Then somebody invented arc lighters. So these things are legit, 5,000 volts in the palm of your hand, they're USB rechargeable, they're durable, they're compact, and I mean, they make some pretty hot arcs too. And sure, they might be little baby arcs right now, but that plasma nation is all gonna change. My name is Jay, and you're watching a Plasma Channel Original. Let's get to the build. With the base complete, now there's actually a canvas to go ahead and put the components on, the components that actually run the entire coil. So let's get to it. So I thought it would look cool to have the lighter in the center of the base, not just for symmetry, but also so the USB port's right there and you can easily charge the thing. But that causes a problem because you can't access the button and you need the button to power it on. So time for surgery. Removing the case, there's just a simple piece of plastic that's covering up the push button switch. I'll need to run two wires from the switch out this hole here so that I can turn this thing on and off without having to use that push button switch. This metal framing also needs to be removed so that I can attach two high voltage wires going out. After a little bit of work taking apart the lighter and just making sure there's enough high voltage insulation inside of it, this is the result. Uh, I think it's awesome if it's perfectly in the base and I have two wires coming off that go to a push button switch and then two high voltage leads that'll go out and connect up to the rest of the circuit. I mean, I think this looks awesome. This power source is good to go. Time to move on to the next component. So capacitors fill a really crucial role in Tesla coil circuits and that role is to charge up the high voltage energy from the power source and then discharge it through the primary coil. And it's recommended you use polypropylene because polypropylene excels in really high frequency applications and they're just flat up legit. They have very high voltage standoffs and like I said, they, they lose very little energy. Using perfboard as a platform, three capacitors are slid into the pre-drilled holes and soldered in series on the backside. Doing so allows it to slide right in next to the lighter. Once propped up on nylon supports, this makes a 1.3 nanofarad 9 kilovolt capacitor that's flat out ready for battle. Ah, so spark gaps are a fairly ancient piece of tech. They've been around for a couple hundred years and essentially they act as a high voltage on off switch. Power on, power off. And in a Tesla coil circuit, they allow the voltage in the capacitor and the power in the capacitor to rise up high enough and then all that power can dump across the gap and then go into the primary coil. Since the spark gap needs its own space, it's gonna go right here. It's made of two brass bolts that are supported by two angle brackets and it's adjustable for power, but I'll touch on that later. 
At this point, the drive circuitry essentially is complete, which leaves the transformative section of the Tesla coil, which is the primary and the secondary coils. So, those are up next. Now we're getting somewhere. The secondary coil is easily the most iconic part of a Tesla coil. It's the tall tower that everybody recognizes. It's the component that's responsible for developing the crazy huge voltages, the huge sparks and arcs that we know Tesla coils for. A good secondary needs good materials. As a backbone, the secondary uses a piece of one and a quarter inch PVC pipe that's about four and a half inches long. Then small holes are drilled at either end and it's wound up. Once wound, both ends are wrapped in electrical tape to not just hold it in place, but also protect it from corona. Then for some pizzazz, a drawer knob and some washers are used as the top load, and then those are connected to the end of the secondary. It's glued to the top, and then the secondary itself is glued to the base. It's important that it's centered and that the other end of the wire points towards one of the bolts. After the secondary coil is in place, the last component to complete the Tesla coil is the primary coil, which is just another coil of wire that's in close proximity to the secondary, and its purpose is to transfer energy from the tank circuit into the secondary coil so that it can make those giant sparks. When I built my last mini coil, I had insulation issues between the primary and secondary coils. Whenever I cranked up the power too much, sparks would jump between the two and just start burning their insulation. That's a really huge design flaw, and it can destroy a Tesla coil within seconds. I don't want to transfer over that flaw into the new design, especially considering the newer coil is a lot more powerful. I need more spacing and more insulation between the primary and secondary coils. Luckily, I have a friend that's really skilled at 3D printing and kind of owes me a favor, so I'm just going to FaceTime him. Hey, Integza, how goes the, um, the bow tie business? Jay? Yeah. Is that you? Yeah, J Plasma Channel. We worked back in Berlin. It is you. There you I go. don't remember you, you bag of excrement. What? You have some nerve calling me after what you did two years ago in Berlin. Ber <laughs> Berlin. We've been over this. It was your brother George that tased you and shaved your mustache. George? Yeah, that was him, George? not me. George! You little <laughs> piece of Okay. So, what's up? Yeah, so I'm building a small Tesla coil that's got some pretty complex parts. Could you print one for me? Oh, you're building a Tesla yeah, coil? Yeah, it's gonna nice. be legit. Can you send me some drawings of the parts you need? Yeah, you got it. Uh, headed your way right now. Let me know, is that readable? Can, can you print that out for me? Jay, mm -hmm. uh, this is just a drawing of a stick man. So, is it yes? Doesn't matter, it's perfect. Awesome. Uh, give me a second. Appreciate it, old friend. That's why science is Okay, Integza outdid himself on this one. There's even two mounting holes, which is nice. Way better than a stick man. It has a nice snug fit, and this will be the perfect insulation to allow for a higher powered coil. This coil is looking sweet. With the primary coil in place, Pretty much everything's there to make it work. And since this is just a standard spark gap Tesla coil, this is how the beast is wired. These are standard symbols that might look familiar if you recall the chalk drawings from earlier, except for this guy, a diode. To provide a ground connection, this Tesla coil uses a counterpoise on its base. It's electrically connected to the secondary through one of the bolts. All right, she's built and wired, and it's time to see what this little beast can do.
So there we have it, an arc ladder powered Tesla coil that makes arcs longer than an inch, so I'm pretty happy with the results. And to charge this thing after it's drained, it plugs right in. When it comes to Integza, he did more than just print out the form for this Tesla coil. He also made his own video on the theory and the history behind Tesla coils that you have to go check out. And if you hadn't noticed, the guy kind of looks like Tesla, so he's probably credible. But I'll put a link in the description down below and also at the end of my video for his video. So go check it out. Also, if you like caffeine nearly as much as I do and you want to support Plasma Channel, then check out the merch that I'm offering at the bottom of this video. So, I want to know, what are your thoughts on this little arc ladder powered Tesla coil? Let me know in the comments down below because I read pretty much all the comments. And also, if you'd like to encourage longer, more frequent uploads, please consider supporting Plasma Channel on Patreon. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to Plasma Channel. Check us out on other social media, and feel free to check out our various other episodes. With science every two weeks, you stay classy.